right. Well, welcome to the next episode of Brain Hope Reality. It's PTSI, not PTSD. We have a very special guest today from Ukraine. Thanks very much for coming. The young lady came pretty far. And, you know, as everybody knows, unfortunately, there's a huge war going on. It cannot fly in, in and out of Ukraine. So uh, if you can tell us who you are and your name and why you came to see us. My Thank name you. is uh, Elizabeth Liza, and I'm from Ukraine. I'm an anesthesiologist and a chief of department of anesthesia in Kyiv, Ukraine. And uh, we don't have pain management, chronic pain management in Ukraine, and especially our uh, civilians and military underdiagnosed with PTSI. Uh, PTSI. PTSI. So, how, how do you say PTSD in uh, Ukrainian? Or... So can you translate what that means? Uh, there we go. The so it's, that, it's, it's basically Ukrainian of saying PTSD. So a term we're going to be changing eventually. We're going to... But D is bad, I is good. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, so they're really underdiagnosed. And I think that probably in a year or maybe a few years, it will be a huge, huge problem in Ukraine. Right. So, and we want to start to help our militaries and civilians as well. So the, the plan, I believe, was when you and I started talking, uh, it's, I can tell the story how you and I connected, which is interesting. Uh, but the plan is hopefully for you to have capability to treat people with PTSD or PTSI. I'll just use PTSD just to make it simpler. Um, in Ukraine, and hopefully you had a chance to try th some of the techniques on the cadaver, and then you've observed me do a bunch of procedures. Uh, there's certainly a lot of publications right now, uh, primarily military, but some non-military from other clinicians. And people from Fort Bragg have done a lot of procedures. At lunchtime, I think you've been to Germany they do it there as well. Uh, Ukraine, I talked to the Department of Defense Ukraine, they were really not quite ready to embrace it then, which is about a year ago, but maybe things will change. I hope so. I mean, like a lot of guys are just ashamed to say that they actually have psychological problem. Right. So, and when, for example, you are talking to your unit and you said that I'm going to a procedure it's okay, but if you are right. going to say that I am going to psychologist, right, it could be a lot of questions about it. Well, there's a couple of problems with psychologists. I mean, with all due respect, the problem with psychology is that it doesn't really. I think it's very effective if you can calm the body down first. And that's why my recommendation is calm the body down, do Stella Gingham block, and do appropriate psychology. But the cool thing about Stella is that people can calm down within 30 minutes. It's a rapid change and the compliance is very high because you feel good rapidly. And also when you're in the war and you have to kind of go do fight the war, you really don't have time to do six months of psychotherapy, which is delayed and interesting how it all works. So I'm actually, I'd be very excited for you to bring it to Ukraine and try it out and you run two hospitals and there are so potentially it could be a significant impact on those people which i think would be great so currently kind of it's becoming an international somewhat movement uh we have a clinic so stella's had a clinic in has a clinic in israel we have uh five clinics i think in australia um uh, there is somebody who's doing stellar ganglion block in England routinely for PTSD or PTSI. <clears throat> Hopefully you can start just trying it, trying it in uh, Ukraine. I think you're going to be pretty amazed at the response. And then considering how traumatizing it is to be in Ukraine, especially when we're not talking about front lines, which is another story altogether, but that's just, but it was really interesting. So you and I had a chance to talk over the week and just the way you well, you know, it's like when there is siren, then you stop doing it and then you go back to normal. 
Can you tell me a little more about that? That's because I, I think it's it's most people don't really understand what it's like to live in a war zone. Uh, that's true, and I hope they will never feel this. I mean, like this is my big hoping that they will never know how is it. Yeah. Uh, first of all, what is really different when you go, for example, for a business trip in Europe or USA? You're like, oh, so many windows. No, 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 guys. It's a bad idea to have so many glass, so many windows. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is that uh, our system really changed for all these uh, years of total invasion. It really has been changed. Uh, outsource companies is what we were talking today in mm -hmm. the morning that when total invasion actually started, uh, we uh, our hospital uh, was used to do laundry and catering with outsource company, and right. they just stopped work outside Ukraine, I assume. In Ukraine, Ukrainian companies, yeah, right? but they stopped work. Drug store, uh, they also pharmacy was closed. Shut down. So yeah. patients on chemotherapy, diabetic, with um, uh, any other chronic diseases. They just couldn't get any right. treatment at all. Patient on di dialysis as right. well. Uh, patient after transplantology, they couldn't. You mean transplant surgery? Yes, they couldn't yeah. even okay. get. Uh, Anti rejection drugs? Yes. So, like, everything is shut down. Hospitals yeah. are working, but they, they just couldn't sell um, pharmacy to people. Right. So. A lot of things, uh, really. And for example, sabotage group. Uh, so a lot of people were trying to volunteer in hospital, but uh, you you just you can't. You can't uh, trust them. You can't trust them. You don't. You never know. There was sabotage. You mean was that like Russian spies sabotaging the hospital? Uh, it used to be in. Um, just a quick reminder that war started actually in tw uh, 2014. Oh, yeah, I remember. And since uh, that time, yeah, the first year from 2014 till 2015, it was probably in Kyiv, it was about 10 attempts. Like terrorist attempts by Russians? Uh, to it's, do not like, it's not like terrorist what attempts. What were they doing? Um, one was explosion. Another, they oh, well, bring that's food. terrorist attack. Yeah, I mean, like, but it's not Explode. a big one. Or just 10 um, people to kill, but go ahead. Um, another one, it was... Like poisoning the poisoning food? Poisoning food, uh, poisoning water. So, you, you, uh, for example, a lot of people... I, I hate to tell that, that's terrorism. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 You're still trying to kill civilians indiscriminately, yes. right? That, yes. by definition, is yeah. terrorism. By definition, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Russians has been like that. That's not really a surprise. Yeah, it's all out war, so it's lovely. So now it's... Would, would, would they able to get it under control now, you think? That kind of attempt? Uh, they're still uh, trying. Of course. Yeah. M not in Kiev, not in Lviv, for example, mm -hmm. yes, but... Kharkiv uh, and East. Uh, so that's part closer of the to the battle yeah. lines. Yeah. Well, anyway, so we're going to try to focus on the most positive thing. So the hope is that I, my hope is that PTSI in Ukraine can be helped significantly with you doing that. And you were able to actually connect to Northwestern, a place where I went to medical school. It's great that you could do it, I couldn't do it. Um, there's too many forms, at least from what they ask us to do. And you're able to see at least some hospitals, right? So I think and you're getting some books, which would be really good. Uh, and then, obviously, if you need anything, you can always call me about it. So I want to talk about challenge coins. I am a great collector of challenge. I have my own challenge coin. My listeners have seen it. Uh, but I now have them from three countries. So this is... U.S. coin. This is from a uh, major in, from U.S. Army. This is from Canadian Special Forces. And then what's interesting about this particular coin is uh, uh, it's phantom non verba, which means deeds, not words, which I think is a good way to go. But if you look in the bottom here, it's 
TCB mm -hmm. taking care of business. So somehow or other, special forces from Canada got connected to Graceland with Elvis. So that was his big saying, TCB. So apparently in the barracks, they have a picture of um, the king hanging there. And now I have one thanks to you from Ukraine. So maybe you can read that because I, I can't really read it particularly well. What it says. It says military uh, military intelligence of Ukraine. Ukraine, and I don't know how to translate this okay. one. Something military. Something about intelligence. Something military. intelligence. Oh, oh, this is all. That's in uh, Latin. Sapiens. Yeah. Here, yeah. Or, so what? What does that mean? You think? I'm not sure. So I can look it up. Sapiens is intelligence. Sapiens intelligence. I'll look it up. Anyway, so that's kind of pretty interesting. Um, so what do you think was, um, so it's interesting. I was, I was actually interviewing another lady from Ukraine about a year ago, and she was telling me the effect of war on animals was very profound. Have you mm -hmm. seen any of that? That's true. What do you think of that? What, what actually happens? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what actually happens. Well, she's talking about what she described as that animals are just wandering around in the days because they're so confused because there's loud sounds that they can't get mm -hmm. normal food. The animals are like even more disturbing than the humans. Uh, yeah. It, for example, if you're going somewhere to the front line um, and you just going out of your car, if there are some dog that has been bombing a lot, mm -hmm. she will uh, get in to the car and she won't leave. Trying to hide. Yeah, yeah. she is will trying to get somewhere else. What's interesting, so I I um, I treated a dog with PTSD, or they call it VPTSD, veterinary PTSD. I'll show you an article or not. So uh, actually, we'll put a link to my YouTube about that. So actually, we are trying to develop a um, treatment center for dogs. Because if you think about it, so the sign, the people go, how do you know dog has PTSD? It's not really complicated. So one, one quarter of military dogs that came back from Iraq have VVTSD. The symptoms of that, they can't sleep. They're either very depressed and they don't do anything, or they're very angry. You know, they're trying to bite whatever is around. And they're highly agitated. And they're hypervigilant and hyperacoustic. So any sound makes them jump. Very similar to a human. So it was pretty interesting to do it. And it actually worked. And that's Horner sign, which we see in humans, mm -hmm. is similar in a dog. It's also droopy, but they have a third lid. So it kind of looks a little differently. But it's still the same. So so it just to me, it's always I always look at PTSD or PTSI as a physiologic thing. So if you think about people arguing, like, well, does PTSD exist? Do people lie? Dogs don't know from lying. There's no such thing as malingering in a the dog. They just want to eat and have a good time. So if they're there hiding, you know they're traumatized mentally, even if they don't have physical injury. Yeah. That's so true. unfortunately, it's exactly the same thing that happens to a human being. And that's as part of the message is that we need to really think about PTSI, we need to change the name, and the compliance, I think, with treatment. Like, you know, if the soldiers or civilians, instead of being shamed by it and have stigma, they can actually say, hey, this is my biological problem. I'd like to get it fixed because I want to have a life. That's what clinicians should be doing, in my opinion. I'm one of those clinicians. And it's been quite an ongoing debate between me and the American Psychiatric Association. But I think we're going to get it changed yet. Um, anything else you think people should know in Ukraine? I'm hoping to send to Ukraine, and hopefully they will understand that you came here to learn about chronic pain and PTSD or PTSI. And what what can people do to help you promote it or help you be more successful in Ukraine? I think we need just, I mean, like you uh, did really a lot. From this one week, I got a lot of knowledge. Really, so I appreciate it. Uh, so we need to start and to see where it's going to go. Uh, and I mean, like, you know, we have a plan. 
but the culture is different everything is different so we need to start to see where it goes and then we need to decide when we yeah. can do more to promote this thing so i'll offer you three things number one anytime you want to do a zoom was either do grand rounds or talk to the scientists or department of defense i'm obviously there my wife told me i cannot go to ukraine because it's uh it's a little dangerous uh, i even know i was born there that's why i feel very strongly to help so that's one two i think the people i understand the cultural difference again i was born there and i lived in ukraine and i lived in russia so i kind of understand some of the thinking uh if you think about a lot of special forces guys they're very similar so we've treated we had a i had absolute honor to treat a bunch of special forces guys from canada so if you have one person that has a good because response then, yeah. and they all go whoa he's different i want the same thing that's I mean, forget the science, forget why, blah, 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 blah. And I think one of the ways, so there is a com camaraderie, all special forces I've met so far, they're all the same. That's, like I had, that's true. Right? Ukraine is the same, yeah. So if those guys, I, I'm always willing to connect you to the guys from special forces from Canada mm -hmm. and U.S. I have very deep connections with them. I think if special, well, and usually, at least in the U.S., I think it's the same in Ukraine. When special forces goes, army goes. When army goes, everybody goes. Because then it's cool, it's hip, da, da, da. And SF or special forces or SO, a special operative force of all types, those guys really take no for an answer poorly. And that's why they have new weapons. They have all of this. Because if you think about it, what is the best weapon you can have? What do you think? What's the best weapon? I don't know. A functioning brain. <laughs> That's if you're stupid. Is. Yeah, no, no, no. Or no, you, no. you don't know who you are. There was an article written about a pilot of B1. That airplane is about $1.2 billion. And he was thinking about crashing the plane all the time because he was suicidal. Because he's seen so many. What they would do in, in Iraq, they would fly. And then they had special cameras in those and they would be dive bombing and that sometimes they would wave them off. Sometimes they would actually put ordnance on the ground. So he had to see all the destruction. So he was suicidal. The point is he has this amazing machine, but he is thinking about killing himself. That is not a good soldier. You don't want anything to do with that. And if you can stay calm when people are shooting at you, you're much more likely to survive instead of, there is a special, you know, there's techniques like you do, they call it um, prey and spray, which is basically you just do automatic fire mm -hmm. to get somebody panicked and then you can kill them. So if you're calm, you like to survive. So the best weapon is the brain. That's true. Right? No doubt. Saying, right? No doubt. The gun, a knife, you know, nuke, a great, but who's driving the ship? <laughs> right? The brain. So to me, and we've had actually a number of our special forces guys who were deployed in Iraq, and they were, um, they were in Iraq, and they believed they survived the encounters because they had stellates because they were not disoriented. Mm -hmm. Which you think about that, that's a pretty big deal. It's a huge deal. Because if you're in a battle, you only have so many soldiers, and that they're all concentrated. Yeah, if they're like, Pain. if they're out of that, yeah. right? That's not, it doesn't help them to be good soldiers. And they're trying to defend their country. So that's a pretty reasonable thing to do. <laughs> they're trying to live in freedom of their own choosing. Um, so I think it's just something to think about that mental state. People take it for granted that you have to suffer. Like, you know, World War II, people like never talked about it. So my father was one of those people. They came home, they started drinking and... He gave PTSD to my mother. It's called secondary PTSD, and so eventually took her life. So the point is, not talking about it is not really successful, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's not helping at all. No, it doesn't help anyone. And also reduces fertility, sexual function. It causes cancer. It causes heart attacks. Whatever. So the point, at very least, if people start thinking about biologic impact of PTSD, I think that's meaningful. And I don't know. If about studies or all this. I mean, we've talked about, I talked about Department of Defense people in Ukraine about a year ago, and they were like, no, no, we need those studies. And I told them, I don't think AA, it's been done already in special forces in other countries. 
The other part, you don't have the time to do a formal study. The war will be over by the time you finish the study in three years. And, and people are going to suffer meanwhile. And it also leads to suicide and all the other problems. So I really hope you can, at least I, I hope it works as well in Ukraine as every other country I'm aware of. We will see, but I have no doubt it will. I hope so. Hope it works well. Well, we wish you a good trip home. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting for and coin. for knowledge. My pleasure. I can always cut it up. Sounds good. Cut it in pieces. This is the first of its kind treating somebody from Ukraine. Really? Yeah, I've never treated anybody from Kiev or Ukraine. No, I'm not aware of it. Not, not knowingly. I have tried to get people here from Ukraine, not successful. Excellent skills. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what can I tell you? All right, let's do it. Here goes Lady King. The rest of the world knows so many languages. Americans are yeah, well, Europeans have to. Americans are ignorant and don't know anything besides English. Yep. A lot of times, not very well in that. Yeah, it's interesting. Is your boyfriend a doctor too? No, he's a uh, military. Mm. Yeah, military intelligence. A big job. Done fine targets. I know a lot of intelligence officers from U.S. Interesting how they see information, process information. Another way of thinking altogether. All right. Here you go. The pre-vertebral fascia, right there is the tip, bevel is up, that's right, negative, all right, FCC, good, and 4CC, Halfway done. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'm here to Tiburpal, going all the Tiburpal. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Beautiful. Show the quenchy. Thank you. Okay? Perfect. Okay? Perfect. I'm just going to zoom in the spot. Sure. So you can see them. I still feel relaxed, but I feel like I'm more focused and I can mention details I haven't paid attention before. Oh, that's good. Nice. Another couple hours since the procedure. So what do you think we're at right now? Uh, I feel relaxed. More, more, more sleepy. I mean, like, I really want to sleep. And Another thing that I, we were talking about that it's uh, color changes and like all, all shadows of gray color they look different. I mean, like you feel this difference in shades. Can you explain that more? What do you mean by that? Uh, so, for example, like everything was just like gray color, it was just a gray color. Oh, but there's now, multiple levels of gray. Yeah. So, yeah. 50 shades of gray. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I could do this, I'm sorry. We're good. Yeah. My friend, you're on. So the interesting thing now that uh, I'm mostly sleepy, but what do I feel? It's like I was crying for a long, long time for something really made me sad before. And now I just got a relief. Without the be without crying. Without crying. You skip that yeah, step. Yeah, no, no. I mean, like I was not crying, but I feel like I was crying like for a long time, like two hours or three hours, and now you feel this relief, which you actually get after you crying. Love it. All the struggle and pain I leave behind.